everybody welcome back I'm Dee's this is my workshop you know it was suggested to me that I do one final review of the tensioner pulley setup if you've been following along on the channel you'll know that uh, I had collaborated with Dave on the tensioner pulley setup and design that comes with these that comes with these lathes it's okay it functions but over time the way that they put the bearings back to back they end up wearing out um, with the pressure and the, the tension that's pulled on that pulley, eventually they start wobbling and they become very loose the way that that was designed. Sure, you can pull those out, put new ones in, but the problem is with the aluminum tension tensioner pulley that comes with this thing, it wears it out on the internal bore where those bearings ride. So we went back and forth with a few different designs. I made some shafts, I did, I got all kinds of videos on that stuff. If you wanna go back and look at that, Maybe I'll link to all those in this video because this is going to serve as the final video to that whole saga. I will share the final design that I think is pretty optimal for this setup and how it's holding up. And it will, you know, we'll just finish it all out so you can see what final design I ended up with in case you're wanting to tackle something like this. Let's get, get you down here. We're going to take the side panel off and just start tearing it apart and review how it looks together and hopefully it's all holding up like I like I expect it to. I did take a look at it uh, a couple weeks ago. It looks pretty good, but let's take a look at it together. We're going to take the belts off and really take a really good close look and inspect everything. Belt off. That is not rocking. It's holding up super well. Let's get this off of here. Let me get you down closer because you, you're going to want to see this. This is uh, definitely looking a lot better. Check this out. There's no rock. That is holding up very nice. It's, this was the design that, that needed to be here. And let's take this apart and we'll go to the bench and we'll review it together. Notice I have a nylon, nylock, and then I've got some thrust washers here. I'm not sure, thrust bearings, I'm not sure they're absolutely necessary, but they kind of made sense for my setup. Just uh, something I wanted to make sure I keep on there. And there it is. Let's go over to the bench and we'll inspect this closer. Very nice. It's not even all greased up. This is my custom shaft that I made. That's holding up very well. I'm very happy with this setup. The pulley setup. By the way, this is the pulley that Dave actually made from scratch. It's also beautiful, holding up very, very well. Quite impressed with this. It's better quality than any of any of the pulleys that came from Vivor. But you don't have to have this pulley in order to do this design. You can actually take one of the ones you can purchase or the one that came with your lathe and bore out the internal diameter of the pull, of the pulley to the to the external di the OD of your bearings. So how this setup is, maybe we'll draw this out too. The final design, and there's a video on this as well that shows it in more depth, in more detail. But what we have, you know, we have our pulley. 
rudimentarily, but then there is the bore in here. Well, the original actually had a step in here, and again, you can see this in all my other videos, but it had a step, a C-clip in here to hold everything in. There was a bearing here and a bearing here back to back. There was nothing back here. The, the step was actually way back here. You had two bearings sort of in the middle and then a clip and then the, the shaft itself actually had a shoulder that would come in and just sit in here. And over time, these two bearings just wore out and this thing would rock. Um, and it, it was a bad design. I, I mean, it worked. I shouldn't say terrible design. It just was cheap and easy probably. That's probably why they did it. The redesign that Dave came up with and, and I, as we collaborated back and forth, was to, and I, I should also say there were tons of great suggestions in these videos from everybody watching, the experts out there. All of you had a hand in, in this final design and the ideas that we came up with. And, and a few of you are just experts in this. You already knew, you're probably screaming at the TV, probably screaming right now. We already knew what the problem was. So the new design is if we take the bore, so we got the bore inside, inside the pulley, you know. What we did was we press fit a bearing here and here. So here's one bearing. And then we press fit a bearing back here. And in here is a aluminum spacer. So it's actually the bore of it is pretty close. It's, it's, loose fit on my shaft but it's pretty close i need to edit a quick addendum to that video to this video i misspoke when i said that uh, the spacer was riding on the out outer races they're actually riding on the inner race now how i did that in between the bearings i have uh, this is not the pulley i, I already assembled everything i don't want to disassemble it again but the, the spacer that I have rides, I put in some brass washers on either side in between, the, in between the spacer and the bearings in order to ensure that that inner bearing spacer was riding on the inner race. The reason I wanted it to ride on the inner race was when this is mounted on the lathe and I have my thrust bearing tightened up on the outside, it's all pushing on that inner race. And ultimately, the force on that inner race is pushing from the outside with the nut all the way through to the flat part of the, the mounting shaft in order to keep everything tight and, and keep it from moving around. The problem would be if I had a larger inner diameter and it was riding on the outer races, even though in theory that makes sense, I'm now pushing on the two inner races on either side, which are gonna create pressure to push in inwards with no, no positive reinforcement on the inside of those. So I, I needed to correct that because I described it incorrectly in the video. So I'm, let me edit all that stuff out of there, but I wanted to update that. So we've got the pulley. And we have our bearing out here and our bearing in the back. There's our two bearings and we have our spacer between. Well, we've got our inner race and we have our outer race up here. And what I did was I put this real thin washer on the inside where the inner where the spacer is so that it's pushing against the inner race here and here all the way through so when I have my nut on the outside pushing against the flange for the the mounting bracket this thing it's actually a, a positive stop all the way through so I wanted to describe it a little more accurately. Regardless, the, the setup that's, that's really gonna work is having that inner spacer between two outer bearings 
versus two bearings that are back to back like this original setup. So it'll be more like this. Now this was a previous attempt that we did with some needle bearings. This is not ideal. Don't use this setup. But uh, this is the original setup as you can see. You've got two back to back bearings nestled down in there and that causes everything to start loosening up and it's just not a great great setup. That is the updated description of, of how that's set up. I hope that makes sense. If anything, it might have confused everybody. But but the point is, the inner races are, are secure from the outer nut all the way through the shaft to the inside mounting bracket. And that is what's able to tighten everything up, keep it from moving around, and the pulley is working great. I don't really want to disassemble this because it is press fit in there. It, it's working very well. I don't want to change anything up. But that's, that's the design of how that's, that's working. If you really want some more depth of how all that worked, and you can uh, check out my other videos. I'll find them all and link them in this video so you can easily find them if you want to. Uh, but again, the key was a bearing on the outside, a bearing on the back, and a sleeve between the two. It's holding up very well. And check out that pulley. Like I said, this thing is beautiful. That setup's holding up very well. I'm really happy with this. Well, everybody, as you can see, that tensioner pulley is holding up very well. I'm very happy with that design. Thanks, Special thanks to Dave for all the help with that. This will be the final video that I'm going to do on that tensioner pulley, at least with this lathe. That design is what, what really needs to be changed, I think, from Vivor. I don't think it would be that much in manufacturing costs for them. Sure, it's easy to just slap a couple bearings back to back. But honestly, this design is what you need. You need bearings on both ends. 
and you need a spacer between the two. And that's going give to you, give you the most rigidity that you need to accommodate the pressures that are coming from those belts. Overall, this has been a great uh, collaboration. Special thanks, like I said, to Dave. I'm going to link to all the videos, part of this journey with this uh, tensioner pulley, this exploration and improvement of the setup. If you're interested, please feel free to uh, take any of those you know, designs that we have as inspiration and, and improve yours. But overall, I've been using this for several months now, and it's by far the best setup that I've had since the original design that came with it. Hopefully you find uh, all this useful. This shouldn't be a terribly long video. It's really just a review of that pulley setup. I know several of you were asking about that, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a final review of that setup and what ended up working for me. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you have not subscribed, please do. It really helps out the channel, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.